Hello and welcome to The Gist. I'm your host, Chris Petrano, here every week to break down all the things that are happening in pop culture and interviewing the people that make it pop. Today, we are having a Vanderpumpalooza because Lisa Vanderpump is facing off against Lisa Vanderpump, who is also facing off against Lisa Vanderpump. That's right. Lisa Vanderpump is currently has three shows in their like middle of their seasons, just kind of getting started. We've got Vanderpump Rules, which we all have come to know and love. We've talked about it a ton on the podcast. And then we've got the new, what Bravo is calling the next chapter of Vanderpump Rules, The Valley, which uh, Vanderpump is also a executive producer of. And then over on Hulu, we've got Vanderpump Villa. So Lisa Vanderpump is delivering uh, some major, major um, television for us to be watching in this spring season. And so today, we are going to have her face off all of three of these shows and declare a winner. But before we do that, we are going to just give a brief recap as to kind of what's going on, because I'm caught up on all three of the shows. And I got to say, I'm pretty surprised by where I landed. Um, Because I, I think it's, you know, it's easy to kind of get to a place where, you know, Vanderpump Rules has been this staple of Bravo. It really ushered in kind of the young ensemble cast. Um, You know, obviously we have our NYC prep days back in Bravo, which if you guys have not watched that, it's now going to be available on Peacock. And it's only one season, but my God, I was obsessed with NYC prep and I wish that they had never canceled it. Um, So go watch that. That's just a plug. Nothing to do with Vanderpump. But... um, But, you know, it was just, it was bringing authenticity of like these young kids trying to make it in LA, working for Lisa Vanderpump at her restaurants. And, you know, we just really fell in love. And from Vanderpump Rules, we ended up getting uh, Southern Charm and Summer House. And, you know, we really started getting these young ensemble casts on Bravo. And so it really did sort of kick off this sort of format. And of course, last year, the topic that everyone had been talking about was Scandival from Vanderpump Rules. And so, you know, we were really looking forward to what we had in store for this season. Now, I think a lot of us were concerned that Vanderpump, where do they go when it's, when everyone's talking about Scandival, how do you pick up the pieces and sort of put together a show again. And, um, you know, it was, it was, it was something that we really needed to kind of like discover together. How are we going to pick, pick up our feelings and emotions of where, uh, where Scandaval left us last year and where do we go from here? And, uh, and the answer is not far. Okay. We are three months after the reunion filmed and, We've got pretty much everyone back. Of course, we know Raquel slash Rachel did not return for the season, but it's just not giving anything. And of course, like, I do feel like we had to have Tom Sandoval back. Like, we all were team Ariana in the Scandoval of it all. And so we needed to see her sort of rise through the... um, Uh, through all of this, like Dancing with the Stars and all of her endorsement deals and all of the things that she's been getting, um, which has been amazing. But the season's just like falling flat for a lot of other reasons. And I'm not even sure if it's post scandal fatigue or if it's just something else, if it's just kind of like fallen flat. Um, But, you know, Lala is the flip-flopping queen this season. Lala, who typically is like the most opinionated on the show, has like, is like siding with all sides. And in one minute, she's like, with Ariana crying and telling her that she understands that, you know, she has to grieve the loss of this relationship and everything that like has been left behind. And then the next second she's in a confessional telling her that she needs to move on and, and she's not going to support her anymore. So I can't figure out heads or tails of Lala's storyline this year. And 
I'm like, is she like the villain of the season? I mean, obviously Tom Sandoval, but Lala might be kind of the, the villain. And, you know, Sheena Shay is Sheena-ing like crazy. Uh, I mean, she is making everything about Sheena, which she does. And, you know, we love her for it, I suppose. Um, Brock is not having a season. Brock, who tends to fade in the background in previous seasons, really has some op- strong opinions and they're not, they're not favorable. Um, I am not a fan of his sort of take on really anything this season. He seems very uh, chauvinistic in everything that he has been delivering. The only sort of bright spot for me is Katie and Schwartz. Now I'm a little, I'm always kind of a little annoyed with Schwartz. Um, and certainly his like storyline with Joe was a, a wild ride. Um, and that hair guys, first of all, Joe is a hairdresser, but like, I don't feel like she's doing herself any favors with the way that she's doing Tom's hair. It's a wild, I mean, it's, it's a wild ride. His hair, the story of his hair in itself is a storyline, but I am kind of liking the like banter lately between Katie and Schwartz. It's almost like they found and fallen into a friendship Um, which is probably really more of what their relationship was to begin with. And now that they're like in this like weird love triangle, throuple-y thing, it's, it's wild. That's maybe like the bright spot. And of course, like we'd love seeing Ariana and um, her sort of working through things, but yeah, it's Vanderpump's just not Vanderpump rules. I have to, wow. I'm so used to just saying Vanderpump this episode. I've got to really, I got to really dot my eyes and, uh, cross my T's, guys. So VPR, Vanderpump Rules, we are not giving. And I'm really not sure where we go from here. I feel like we're getting close to wrapping up the season. Um, the rumor mill says that at the reunion, friendships are severed like never before. And I don't know how we pick up the pieces truly at this point. I think we've now seen what happened post scandal and now I don't know if I'm interested. So who knows? Who knows? I mean, like I said, Bravo is branding the Valley as the new or the next chapter of Vanderpump Rules. Um, And so I am curious, like, are they ushering in this sort of new show to sort of send over some of the cast members that we want to keep, like, you know, maybe keep Lala and Sheena and, and move them over to the Valley and just have a new show. And because Vanderpump has essentially closed almost all of our restaurants, it feels that we started. I mean, Sir, uh, Villa Blanca, she's got Tom Tom now, but she closed Pump. And so, like, you know, these kids obviously don't work for her anymore. The the premise of what Vanderpump rules was is totally different now. Um, and so remains to be seen where that show goes. But um, but so that's where we're at with Vanderpump Rules. Then the Valley, which I did not want to like, guys. I am going to just be really honest. When I saw the preview for it, I was a little pissed. I was like, why are we giving Jax Taylor a platform? Why do we need Jax Taylor back on our screens? And I have to say, I'm kind of loving the Valley. And I, it's I actually am not as interested in Jax and Britney's storyline. They really kind of like fed them to us that they were going to be like the, the marquee sort of players of this cast. Um, not really, you know, I, I, I'm like, but I honestly, like I was, as I was thinking about like what to bring you guys on my hot takes about the Valley, I was like, why is it good? Like, I don't know. I don't know why I'm like entertained by it. And maybe it's because I do watch it back to back with Vanderpump Rules and I'm so let down from what I'm getting on Vanderpump Rules that by the time I'm getting, I feel like I'm getting something on the Valley and maybe that's like fun. I mean, but like seeing, seeing all the guys like go to a county fair with their kids and Jax's son is like, you know, grabbing poop and putting it in his mouth. Like it's, it's wild. It's wild. And it's giving us something different from some characters and some group of people that like we aren't used to seeing um, on Bravo. And so maybe that's what it is. You know, I think the fact that we've got Kristen Doty back, 
um, on Bravo is, I mean, Kristen always sort of delivers the drama and she's always kind of cast as like the villain. Um, But the fact that we are in a race scandal with her is bonkers to me. Like the fact that that storyline came up and that producers even didn't just shut it down is wild because she essentially got canceled. I mean, not essentially. She got canceled and got fired from Vanderpump Rules over racial remarks that she made. And now we're talking about like, race again and she's in this scandal and I'm like this is wild and I, I I don't know because it's they're taking a risk I guess by putting all of this out and uh it's but it's very Kristen and you know I don't know and yeah like I said it's Jax is not the number one guy in this group okay he's He's on the screen. He's definitely, he fe- he's feeling himself. We know that Brittany and Jax are like separated post the show. They claim that we're going to see it kind of break down. Um, I haven't seen a lot of that yet. Um, but they're, uh, but he is not the number one guy in the group. And if I'm saying number one guy in the group, I'm talking about the number one douchebag. Okay. Because I don't think that we have like a lot of, room here um i can't remember I, and this is the one thing about the valley is i can never remember any of their names i'm constantly like i feel like they just need to have their names like next to their heads like while they're talking because i'm like i they're all just like these random names and i i don't know and maybe it's just the f- fact that it's a new show but yeah i can never remember but i think it's janet's husband he to me would be the number one guy in the group. He seems the most like put together. He like he doesn't like stray from the drama, but he's not a part of it and he's not trying to be a part of drama. Um and so I I actually like him probably the best if I was if I was to pick a true number one guy in the group, but if he's the best guy, Jesse is the worst guy. I mean, and he might be one of the worst guys that we've ever had on reality TV. Now, we know that Jesse and his wife, um, who, again, what is her name? I think it's Michelle. Yeah. Uh, Michelle is, uh, they also are now separated. Um, And you can tell why, right? I mean, they like have no, they're in couples therapy. They're not attracted to each other. They are, they have got some secrets. And, but he is horrible. I mean, he's giving real Spencer Pratt vibes. Um, it's, but that's also, you need villains. You need like polarizing characters on TV to make it an, a worthwhile show to watch. Um, and then, yeah, so I'm, I'm loving the value. Oh, and the other sort of like keynote, um, Zach, who's the friend of Zach's hair. It's its own, it's its own I mean, it's its own cast member, but it's also its own zip code. Um, And I think, you know, Zach's living in L.A., but his hair is, like, way south of the border, okay? I mean, his hairline is wild. I mean, it's giving giving Teresa Judice a run for her money with that hairline. And it's, I can't, I, I can't, I mean, he even is, like, in on the joke now. Like, people have like compared it to one of the like Lego figurines because it's like, so like perfectly combed to the side. And it just, I don't know where it starts and where it ends. And it's, it's so wild. And obviously like everyone online is feeling the same because I've seen memes for days on it. Um, But that in itself is worth watching. I'm just like, at what point does the hair move? Is it a toupee? Is it real? I've like, I saw like a picture of him, that he was bald, but I couldn't tell if it like it was edited and somebody Photoshopped it. So I don't, I don't know. Is it a hair piece? Is it real? Is it the way that he combs it? If you have answers, I've got questions. Okay. So hit me up, you know where to find me. Um, so yeah, the Valley, I think, I think we're, we're liking it. Right. Um, and then over on Hulu, which was the big surprise is Lisa Vanderpump left the Bravo family to give us Vanderpump Villa. 
And I'm going to be honest, okay? There's like a couple of things. Because obviously, you know, Vanderpump has had very close relationships with Bravo. And she has pitched other shows. She had Vanderpump Dogs, which... I think ended up just on Peacock or I don't know if it was like a web series or what it was, but she's been pitching shows through at least the NBC family for years. And I have to imagine that she brought the concept of Vanderpump Villa to Bravo first and they passed. And so my sort of like take on this was like, okay, this is going to be a, you know, really bad show it's just i mean i don't know where else to put it like it's gonna be the discount version of vanderpump rules um the concept is basically the concept is vanderpump rules like early days where they're all servers still um meets below deck and so they're at this chateau which uh lisa calls chateau rosabelle um, so, you know, instantly the minute I saw that she was like, oh, I, d- I, you know, I've taken over and I'm opening the Chateau Rosabelle. I was like, okay, I got to get to the bottom of this. Is this a real business? Cause I know, sh- I know she's got real businesses, right? Like we just talked about all the restaurants that she's opened. She's got her Vegas res- uh, restaurant, but I was like, does she really have a French Chateau? And she's like putting this thing together so I did a little Googling and it's, it's not Ro- uh, Chateau Rosabelle. It is actually, a, it is a place, um, but it's called Chateau St. Joseph. And so it's clearly like, this is where they, she decided that she was going to film this show. And so right off the bat, I'm like, okay, this is obviously like very artificial. Like these people that she's hired, they're all, you know, just want to be actors and, they were hired on to be play these roles and and be cast in the show. And then they're going to this like fake business that she doesn't actually have. And they're, it, it kind of reads as a competition um, the way that it's all kind of going, but it's not a competition. It's just, they're all living together. They're all working together. Some of them want like other people's roles. Um, so yeah, but it's it's very below deck in that way. Like you're seeing the guests. Um, we get like um, what's on the on below deck preference sheet meetings. Like you're essentially like she gets all the cast together and they they talk about like here's the guest, here's the events that they want to have, here's like the things that we're gonna do uh, to make their stay really memorable. And then the difference between that and uh, this and below deck is that the guests also have confessionals while they're there. So you get to see kind of their take and their behind the scenes um, as well as the, the cast members. And so you're seeing sort of like what's happening behind the scenes, but also you're getting like a little bit of take of like how the guests are feeling about this curated experience. Um, That's also very Vanderpump branded. Like you show up and you get like Vanderpump Rose and you get like all this Vanderpump stuff. You get a Lisa Vanderpump, um, note in your gift basket from Lisa. So it's, you know, people are showing up for, well, I want to say for Lisa Vanderpump, but also, I mean, let's be real. People are showing up because they were paid to. I, I think that everyone on the show is an actor. Um, I don't know that like anyone's actually having their vacation at Chateau Rosabelle because how would they have known about it if it's not a real place? So yeah, I mean, there's some like definitely some holes that we're poking here, like right off the bat with this show. Um, but you know, I will say I like, I watched the first few and, and I was like, yeah, I mean, it's, it is, it's, it's entertaining. It's very Vanderpump. It's very, you know, interesting. There's drama right off the bat between the, the folks. Um, you know, Lisa's got her rules and, no drinking on the job. And of course everyone's drinking on the job. And so there's, there's all, re- there's like a lot built in, but I've got to say that like by four or five episodes in, I, I think that's where we're at now. I can't remember how many I've actually watched. Um, I'm intrigued. And n- even all of the things that I just said, I like, I'm committed in this very strange way that I didn't realize I would be. Um, 
I feel like Marciano, first of all, is the new Jax Taylor, if we're going to compare them. He is dating Hannah, who is like very much like the Stasi. She kind of just flies off the handle and is pissed at every girl and, you know, is jealous as hell and um, said that they were broken up, but immediately they're like hooking up on the show. So it's who knows. But yeah, I mean, but Marciano is a, a just such a character. I mean, this guy. The, first of all, the amount he's drinking on the job, I don't know how the guy stands up. I mean, he's like drinking from the bottle. And then like, I think in the first, I think it was the first episode, he had like nine shots with the guests. And it reminded me of that scene oh, years ago on Vanderpump Rules that like Jack showed up at a bar and was like, I have had a day or something. And he like lined up like a whole bar's worth of shots and then just like went down and systematically took them all. And it was, and I remember being like, oh my gosh, like this person is unhinged. How is he alive? Um, Marciano is like putting him to shame. And then there's uh, Matthew who is the manager. And Okay, first of all, Matthew's clear. I, I, several of these people, like, I feel like must have OnlyFans. Like, that's probably where Lisa found them for the casting. Like, he is so proud of his body. And, like, he's constantly talking in this, like, way about how seductive he is. And he's, you know, giving people lap dances. He's also the manager. So he's m- supposed to be managing all of these people. And he's the most unhinged. I mean, truly, like, stripping down to his underwear, um, talking about his elephant penis. Um, he, I mean, just things that, like, as... And then he's also drinking on the job. Like, he... And straight from the bottle. I mean, it's so wild that this person is the manager. And, of course, everyone, like, hates him and is, like, Lisa doesn't see it. Um, but also, she, like, said that she sees she's like watching the tapes and she has cameras everywhere. So I'm like, when is she going to call him on it? But it is, it is just kind of entertaining though. At the end of the day, I'm kind of like, I'm loving it. And I mean, good on Lisa to see, you know, the popularity of below deck and sort of adapt it into her sort of format. I mean, it really does kind of work. Um, But in the most artificial way, Okay, like where I do sort of believe that like back in the day, the Vanderpump Rules kids were all truly a group of friends that all worked together, that had history, that, you know, Jax and Kristen having an affair and sleeping together while watching Drive on the couch. Like all of those things happened before the show ever aired, which made it feel really authentic. And so like these people have never met before. They who knows if they like truly even work in hospitality. Like I said, I feel like several of them have to have only fans accounts. Um, and I just like, I don't necessarily buy any of it because I also, uh, now that I know too, that Chateau Rosabelle is not a real place. I'm like, well, are we coming back for season two or what's the long game that we're playing here? Like, are we just testing at the waters to see if this thing works? Um, It's all very unclear. And so I, um, you know, I've got questions, but I have got to say it's, I'm, I'm going to be watching the rest of it. So, um, but yeah, so we've got Vanderpump rules, the Valley and Vanderpump Villa. And, if Lisa is versus Lisa versus Lisa was a real fight, I've got to tell you, I think the winner is Vanderpump Villa. Are you, I mean, I I feel like I'm 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 torn because there's such history with Vanderpump Rules that it's like I want to love these people and I know these people like their stories and like I said it it definitely has more authenticity than anything else. Um, But I'm going to have to say that 
Vanderpump Villa is like definitely giving me the most, like I'm most excited to watch the next episode of Vanderpump Villa. So that's kind of like how I'm grading this. Okay. So giving you that kind of scale, I'm most excited to watch Vanderpump Villa followed by the Valley because I do like feel like it's somewhere in the middle. I feel like there is some history with this cast. There is some real friendships. There is some real stuff happening. Although I feel like they may have filmed this um, like a while ago and sort of waited until it could sort of be ushered in with Vanderpump rules. And so the fact that like several of the couples are separated and we're not going to really see all of that play out, you know, but it, it lends itself to like telling another story in season two. So I feel like it's set up in a good place. And then I'm sorry, my least favorite one to watch right now is Vanderpump Rules. And it's mostly because I don't feel like people are being them. Like, I think while I just said, it was like more authentic in terms of like, there are real relationships. And I believe that these people have history. I believe that they're also sort of, um, they've been in the game so long that they're not able to like see past the storylines. Like the fact that like, we're supposed to believe that after Lala and Sheena and Ariana and all these people annihilated and James worm with the mustache annihilated Tom Sandoval and said how bad he was that th- just three months later, they can't understand why Ariana doesn't want to be around them. And if they were breaking the fourth wall more and saying like, Hey, we're filming with this guy. Like, that's why we are here. Like, Tom is invited. I'm inviting Tom to my event because we're on a show called Vanderpump Rules and he's one of the cast members. And so I need to invite him and I'm trying to like see if he's a changed person. I would buy that a lot more than like I'm going down a path of self discovery and I'm trying to like be more forgiving and, you know, all of these things that they're saying and doing. It just doesn't, it doesn't read as real or authentic. And They're also sort of attacking Ariana in various ways while she's like just trying to put her life back together, which is a very real thing that would happen after a breakup of this caliber. And she's also not willing to forgive, which is also a very real thing that we should all accept. And it just, again, it's like, even if Ariana just said like, I get that you guys are trying to film with him. I don't want to, and I've told producers that I won't, but I, or that I will be at events, but I don't want to talk to him. Like, it's just, we aren't acknowledging that, like, this is why this group is still together and it just doesn't come off as real. So that's my take. Guys, if you are not watching Vanderpump Villa, I say get on board. And if you're like me and you're feeling very bored and kind of burnt out by the Vanderpump rules, um, crew and the season of what they're delivering. I I have two great options that will give you the Lisa Vanderpump touch, the Valley and Vanderpump Villa. So that's where that's where I leave it. Um, do you agree? Let me know on socials. You can find me at CM Vetrano uh, on all the platforms. Let me know what you're watching. If you're loving Vanderpump Villa, hit me up. If you're hating it, I want to know that too. Um, and yeah, what do you guys think of the Valley? So at CM Vetrano, all the socials. And until next week, uh, it's been Chris Vetrano. Talk to y'all soon. Bye. Bye. 